Hi everyone, here we are for the tutorial for one of the most requested arrangements by Tommy, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And in this first part we take a very detailed look at the iconic intro. Now as always, this lesson is made up out of multiple parts and only the first two or three parts will be released here on YouTube. For full access and loads of extras, please check out my Patreon page. If you need the tab or the notation file, then click the music notes link down below in the description. There is a lot going on in the intro, so I'm going to keep this short. I divided the lesson up into four parts, a quick recap of the techniques being used, the chord sequence by itself, just going over the fingerings, and then the full explanation on the famous part with the harmonics. The last section covers the easiest part of the intro with a bunch of arpeggiated open chords. This part can be used as a standalone intro as well. So if you are not up for the part with all the harmonics, but you do need an intro to this song, then just skip ahead to the chapter on the last few bars and play that by itself as an intro. For those of you that are here to tackle that harmonic intro head first, good luck. So let's dive straight into that harmonic part. Um, this is not really suited for absolute beginners in this type of technique. Uh, so if you're not familiar with what we're about to do or what we're about to attempt, then please have a quick look at my questions tutorial. There is a really small segment in the intro uh, of the song, Questions, the song by Tommy Emmanuel, uh, and I explain the workings of uh, those uh, harp harmonics in full. And you just need to play this one single arpeggio line all the way across the strings in that song. That might be a better place to start out. Now, for people who have tried this before, uh, just a really quick recap. You are going to point the tip of the index finger to the spot where you want to trigger the harmonic. You can practice this by just doing that on the 12th fret. So just point the tip of the index finger to the 12th fret and just pluck the string with the thumb. Tommy uses a thumb pick for the whole song. And I'm pretty much convinced that he does this only for those artificial harmonics. Because in the rest of the song, there's really not that much material uh, that requires a thumb pick, but those uh, harp harmonics sound a lot more clear if you use a thumb pick. So if you're not accustomed to using one, you can do this just as well without one, but the harmonics will pop out just a little less bright than when you're using one. Um, you can start uh, by practicing this. So these are the harmonics at the 12th fret. Do the exact same thing, pointing with the tip of the index finger to the 12th fret and plucking underneath with the thumb each time. In this song, we are going to add in separate uh, or uh, let's say regular fretted notes in between those harmonics. Uh, now, one thing that I really want to stress is some people have the reflex of playing the harmonic with the thumb and the index finger and then plucking the fretted note with the middle finger. So what you're going to do is you're going to play a harmonic and then alternate between just a regular note fretting a chord with the left hand. If you pluck these notes with the middle finger, you are going to make things a little bit more difficult for yourself. Each time you pluck with the middle finger, the index finger has the tendency to move over just slightly, making it a lot more difficult to hit the next harmonic in the right spot. So I would suggest, as you see all of the top guys doing, Tommy Emmanuel, uh, everyone who uses this technique, pluck the fretted notes with the ring finger. So the harmonic with the index finger and the thumb, and the open strings or the fretted notes with the ring finger. That way you can keep the index finger and the thumb locked in the exact right position while playing the open strings with the ring finger. So this is with the middle finger and I'm, I'm not trying to exaggerate this. So you pluck and each time you each time you pluck with the middle finger, you so, sort of get this sideways movement. You don't get that with the ring finger. just playing random strings here, but if you pluck with the ring finger, it's a lot easier to keep the index finger pointed to the right spot. You are going to have to do most of the work in the fretting hand blind, because you are moving around certain chords, but you are 
uh, mirroring those chords in the picking hand 12 frets higher. So that means if you constantly have to glance over to the left hand, things are going to get really, really difficult. So uh, first I'm going to go over the chord sequence for the intro. It's not that many chords. Uh, and then I'm going to play through the section just one time. So you already know what to watch out for in the left hand. We're starting out with an A major 7th voicing, index finger, 7th fret, and just a small bar across the 9th fret, across the G string, B string, and E string. That's the first chord. Then we keep the index finger where it is, and we move to a bar on the 8th on the fret, sorry. So again, a bar across three strings, G string, B string, and E string giving you an A minor 7 flat 5 chord. And halfway through that harmonic, we are going to add in the pinky on the 10th fret as well. So we start out A major 7th to A minor 7 flat 5, adding in the pinky. And then we drop down the pinky one fret to the 9th fret and we remove the bar with the middle finger, giving us a bar across the 7th fret with the pinky on the 9th fret. If you just watch this for, uh, voicing by itself, you might say that this is a, a B minor 9th chord, but with the harmonics we are going to add in, we actually get an E13 sus4 sound. So, and we're just playing this little section up here and the rest is going to be harmonics on those open strings. So E13 sus4, and then we drop down the bar to the 6th fret and we add in the middle finger on the 7th fret of the G string. So we get 6th fret on the D string, 7th fret on the G string, 6th fret on the B string, and then 9th fret on the high E string. Giving you, again, an E13 chord, no sus4 anymore, with a flat 9 in there. So E13, flat 9, and then Tommy removes the pinky as well, giving you an E13 flat 9 and a flat 5, and he will hammer on to the 7th fret underneath there. So, a bit of a jazzy uh, chord section here, um, but the voicings in itself aren't extremely difficult. So one more time, A major 7th to A minor 7 flat 5, adding in the pinky, to what in total will be an E13 sus4 chord to E13 flat 9 to E13 flat 9 and a flat 5 and hammering on to the 7th fret which is the, the, the normal 5th so, so the flat 5 sort of comes and goes in this section. So that's the full chord section. 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, with a hammer on in there. That is the full chord sequence for that for that intro bit. And after that, we move into a few open chords. Things get a lot easier there. Now, first, let me play through that intro section one time well below concert speed already, so you can have a first good look. And then I'm going to explain all the workings of the picking hand. After that, straight into the first verse. A lot of stuff is going on in here. We start out with that very first 
A major seventh chord. The first two notes are an upbeat bars, uh, beats three and four, before we actually land in the very first bar. So, in my sense of time, it, this is what it. Uh, this is what Tom is playing. One, two, three, four, one. That's the timing that I'm feeling. Now, the very first part, Tommy started out really slow and then speeds up throughout that very first A major 7th chord. The first three harmonics are on the 21st fret. Now, if your guitar is like mine, then you don't have a 21st fret. So, my guitar stops at the 20th fret. So, you have to sort of look for the exact spot where you can get that harmonic to sound out, and in my case it's the exact edge of the fretboard. And I guess that for most of you it will be somewhere around the same spot, uh, maybe just uh, the tiniest bit more towards the sound hole or more towards the 20th fret. So, but really just look for it where it sounds absolutely perfect, right, really bright sound, and then just stick to that same position. We start with three pinched harmonics. E string, B string, G string. And then the harping comes into effect. So you always pluck with the index finger and the thumb the harmonic and you play the fretted note with the ring finger. This is how it goes. So three, four, one. And you pluck the E string, fretting down here on the ninth fret, with the ring finger. Three, four, one, and then you do the exact same move on the D string, harmonic on the 21st fret, open E string, then we shift to the 19th fret for the second harmonic, because we're playing the fretted note on 7th fret here, plus 12 frets, harmonic on the 21st fret, to the fretted note on the E string, harmonic on the 19th fret, fretted note on the B string. And that jump has to be done exactly right. This is going to be your focus throughout the intro, is getting those jumps in the harmonics exactly right. That is the picking pattern for that whole A major 7th chord. Doesn't change a single time. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And getting the balance right is the hardest thing. Don't pluck uh, those fretted notes too hard because the harmonic always sounds a little bit softer and you are aiming for an equal volume between those two notes. So the harmonic should sound as loud as the fretted note. Almost the exact same thing. Tommy speeds up throughout this first part. He plays that little harp harmonic, so those four notes, one, two, so those two beats are one single unit and Tommy plays that single unit eight times in total. He speeds up throughout the first four or five units and then sticks to the same tempo all the way to the end of the intro. So this is what you get. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And then he sticks to the same tempo all the way through the intro. If you just count those units, I always count, I don't even count every single beat, I just count the amount of times that I play that one tiny figure. So, three, four, one, two, three, four, halfway, five, six, seven, eight, and then I switch to the next chord. You have to do each and every shift in the left hand without looking at the left hand, or the fretting hand at least, if you're left-handed, it's the other way around. Um, you are going to have to focus so hard on getting those jumps in the harmonic picking pattern right each and every time that there is no time left to glance over to the left hand each time you have to switch a chord. So really work on switching those chords without looking at the fretting hand, making sure that that all works blindsided. You, you, you should be able to put something in between here and just fret those chords right each and every time so you get all the attention you need to get those harmonics in the right spot in the picking hand. So we start out once more on the A minor chord, or the A major seventh chord. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And we drop 
drop down to A minor 7 flat 5. Picking pattern is the exact same thing, but those harmonics at the 21st fret now drop down to the 20th fret. We drop down one fret here, we do the same thing with the picking hand. The harmonic at the 19th fret stays in the exact same place. Picking pattern, same thing. Harmonic on the G string, fretted note on the E string, harmonic on the D string, fretted note on the B string. Exactly the same thing. Again, Tommy plays this unit, this, this, this little section, eight times, but the fifth time around he adds the pinky on the ninth fret, giving it a little bit of a different sound. The picking pattern stays the exact same thing. You're not moving anything around in terms of the harmonics because the, uh, the pinky is added on the high E string, which is always just that one fretted note. So the first four times you have this, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We add in the pinky and the picking pattern stays the exact same thing. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Those two chords back to back. bar, put down the bar at the 7th fret, drop down the pinky to the 9th fret, which means those harmonics on the 20th fret now become harmonics on the 19th fret, and that will be the spot that most of the harmonics we're going to play now are always going to be at. You're just going to have to move over to the 18th fret one time, but that is all. So again, same chord voicing, oh sorry, same uh, trick or same picking pattern at least, mixing up things. Uh, so we keep down that voicing, bar 7th fret, pinky 9th fret, same picking pattern, harmonic 19th fret on the G string, fretted note on the E string, harmonic 19th fret on the D string, fretted note on the B string. The Tommy only plays this unit two times and this is where the real fun begins because now we are going to extend those harmonics across all six strings. Picking hand keeps doing the same thing, pointing at the harmonic with the thumb pick and then the fretted note with the ring finger. The spacing between uh, the harmonic and the fretted note stays the same more or less. Um, it's only when you reach the bass string that you are going to have to shift around each time. When you start going back up, that spacing just changes one time. And then each time you reverse, but you'll see what I mean in just a second. We keep to the exact same fingering. Harmonic on the G string, fretted note on the E string, harmonic on the D string, fretted note on the B string, and then harmonic on the A string, also just on the 19th fret, there is a natural harmonic there, and fretted note on the G string, harmonic on the low E string, fretted note on the D string. So the, the shift in the picking hand is always the same thing, there's always one string in between the harmonic and the fretted note. One, two, three, And then when you reach the bass string, you play the bass harmonic or the harmonic on the bass string, 17th fret, a second time. And that is when the ring finger will start reaching for the higher string. So you play the first time harmonic on the E string, fretted note on the D string, again harmonic on the D string, and then a fretted note on the G string. And it's that move that will trigger your hand in the other direction. So harmonic D string, harmonic G string, and then we move back up A string, fretted note on the B string, D string, fretted note on the E string, G string. So, and that is how we are going to move up and down those harmonics. One more time. I'm just going to, uh, it's really hard explaining the difference between the harmonic and the fretted note each time. I hope it's, it's, it's a bit clear. It's, uh, I know it can get confusing. So, harmonic, E string, harmonic, B string, harmonic, G string, harmonic, D string, same string, and back to the G string with the ring finger. So.
that is one time all the way up and down for those harmonics. So the only harmonic you play two times is the harmonic on the low E string. When you head for the top of the harmonic and come back, you're not playing that harmonic twice too. So this is the full section. That is one time all the way through that section. And now you can just loop this in order to practice this. This is by far the easiest chord voicing you're going to have to apply this technique to. So, so just keep it down and just keep going up and down until this movement feels natural. Always remember playing the harmonic on the low E string twice. First time alternating with the D string. Second time alternating to the G string before you move back down or across the higher sounding strings. And again. And over and over, just over and over until you can feel this working. A little bit more up to speed to give you a sense of the effect. and so on and so on and so on. So this is really what has to get locked in the picking hand. This is the easy section because the harmonics are all on the same fret. So there's no jumping up and down. You can really focus on getting the harmonic to sound out right each and every time on that 19th fret, just in one straight line going up and down before heading into the next chords. The timing or uh, at least counting along is going to get a little bit more difficult too because Tommy is now sort of basing himself on the amount of notes in the arpeggio rather than sticking to a certain amount of beats in each bar. So you are going to have a few time signature changes as well. We start out in this section by playing that small unit two times. One, two, and then across all six strings. This is where the section on this voicing, the, the E13 sus4 chord ends. The first time around, when Tommy plays the first harmonic uh, on the low E string, heading for the fretted note on the D string, he sticks to this chord shape. Then when he repicks the harmonic on the 19th fret, he switches to the other voicing, to the 13th voicing with the flat 9 in there. This makes for a bar of three instead of a bar of four all the way at any. So if I count along, this is what you get. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three. So that very last bar is only three beats instead of four. At least it helps for me to keep my sense of time going. Uh, it's very well possible that Tom is not even thinking in, in terms of beats or bars, but it, it really helps for me. Then, so you head down the last time around with those harmonics, repicking and shifting to the other chord, to the 13 flat nine chord. Same picking pattern going up, but now we have one harmonic at the 18th fret, so we're fretting the 6th fret here, so we have to, for one harmonic, adjust to the 18th fret up here. So one more time, coming from the previous chord, just going down, very last time, repicking, switching, and going back up. Again, harmonic and straight to the G string to change direction again. at the 17th fret to the B string and then harmonic on the 18th fret and picking the open uh, the fretted note on the E string. So this is something you have to watch out for. You have to drop down with your harmonics from the 19th fret to the 18th fret. So it's a bit more moving around in comparison to the previous chord. Just going through this one chord, so harmonic on the E string, fretted note on the G string, harmonic 19th fret on the A string, 
fretted note on the B string, harmonic 18th fret, fretted note on the high E string, and then back to the 19th fret on the G string before we switch back 18th fret, 19, and all the way back down, really slowly. Tommy only plays this chord one time. He already drops out the pinky. And now we're going to add in another technique. We are going to go down the, uh, the strings or across all six strings towards the high E string. And on the high E string, we are going to play that hammer on. Hammering on. So we have the bar at the sixth fret, middle finger at the seventh fret on the G string. We're going to hammer on with the ring finger to the seventh fret on the high E string. In between those harmonics. This is what it sounds like, really slowly. And pulling back off as well, almost forgot that. So, harmonics, this is what happens. Har same picking pattern, harmonic on the E string, fretted note on the G string, harmonic on the A string, fretted note on the B string, harmonic, still 18th fret on the D string, fretted note, on the E string and hammering on to the seventh fret. And we keep the length of each and every note exactly as long. So we're not speeding up because of that harmonic, we keep the exact same pace. And after the harmonic, we play, sorry, after the hammer on, we play the harmonic at the 19th fret on the G string. After that harmonic on the G string, we re-pick the, the fretted note on the E string and we pull off again. So, and you can practice that little segment on its own. Hammering on from the 6th fret to the 7th fret, playing the harmonic and pulling back off. As I say, make sure that you keep each and every note just as long as the other ones. No speeding up, no, no uh, quick uh, hammer on lick here. Everything is the exact same tempo. Things are getting trickier. So here we go, one more time. So harmonics. And then we move back down across the strings as we did before. does play this unit two times entirely with the hammer on and the pull off included. So two times in a row. Again, re-picking the low harmonic and heading back up. And this is where the pinched harmonics end. You play your very last harmonic. At the A string, 19th fret, fretted note on the G string, and then Tommy goes with the ring finger just for the 7th fret with the thumb pick in the picking hand. Harmonic at the 7th fret on the E string and the A string, and then the same thing on the 12th fret, B string, E string. That is where we conclude the, the harmonic harping part. One more time, that very last chord. First time. are the final harmonics and while that rings out those uh, those strings you head for the open position you fret first fret on both the G string and the B string you shift that up to the third fret you shift that up to the fifth fret and then you go for 
ring finger 9th fret on the D string, index finger 7th fret on the G string, ring finger 9th fret on the B string, and you just play and a low open E string to sound it out with, or to round the intro out with. Uh, then we move into a simple arpeggio part compared to what we just did. That is really easy stuff. When you play those last harmonics, try to keep that high E harmonic on top ringing out as long as possible. While you play these notes, Try to keep that E harmonic ringing out as long as possible. It really binds everything together. You're still here? Good. Uh, congratulations. So now let's try to put all of that together because starting from uh, uh, the second you start uh, going across all six strings, things really get a lot more difficult. So we start from the E13 sus4 voicing. Second time across all six strings. Repicking, shifting to the next chord. Repicking, removing the pinky. Hammer on, pull off. One more time. Last harmonic. Last fretted note, natural harmonics, E string, A string, natural harmonics, B string, E string, and then. And the low E string. Then, maybe just let me add that on really quickly. We head for an A chord. manage to get all the way through that and that first bit and this is going to be super easy just a bar across the first fret uh, second fret sorry arpeggio two times going for a D voicing ring finger fourth fret index finger second fret middle finger third fret on the D string G string and E string you have to use the open E string on top as well Tommy plays these arpeggios a little bit different each and every time. If you just want to stick to the same picking pattern, then that works just as well. This is what he plays on, on uh, the, the most popular uh, recording here on YouTube. Sticks to the same A string in the bass. E string, B string, G string. Shifting down the ring finger to the third fret on the D string middle finger 2nd fret on the G string, pinky 3rd fret on the B string, giving you a D minor chord with an A in the bass. And then something really quirky, back to that same D voicing and he's going to slide it down 1 fret, giving you a, an E dominant altered chord, so with the G sharp flat 9 and a 13 again, so a, again a 13 flat 9 chord. Repicks the D string, then the same thing on the 7th fret, just a little bar across the D string, G string and B string, sliding from the 7th fret to the 6th fret. And then he stretches all the way up to the 12th fret to get a high E there. If this is difficult, because it is a really big stretch, then try lifting up the, the bar or play it with three separate fingers so you can play another pinched harmonic at the 12th fret. It's the exact same note. And that... If that is too difficult, then you can just as well do this. Pinch it with the index finger as we did a number of times before, just on the 12th fret. But you do have to lift up that bar to get the E string open underneath there. Maybe it's easier if you use three fingers. Could be done as well. And then just to, to uh, round out everything else, he slides back up to the 7th fret and plays that 12th fret one more time. Again, if you're using the harmonic, then you'd use the harmonic again for that 12th fret. This is that last section with, with that sliding D shape. So starting from uh, the previous chord. That 
arpeggios with the big stretch on top now with a harmonic one more time. Exactly the same thing without that huge stretch in the left hand or in the fretting hand. Uh, let me play through that arpeggio section after uh, that comes after the harmonic section one time all the way so you can get a good sense of what it has to sound like. And this is being used as the transition into the main melody. So and Tommy plays that really freely in terms of timing. Let me try and play all the way through the entire intro really slowly uh, and then you can get to work. There's a lot here to unpack, but I guess you agree that it is well worth the effort as well. Here we go all the way from the top. That was the full intro. I hope you got all the info you needed out of this video and I'll see you again in part two for the explanation on the verse. Take care, bye bye.